How gorgeous is that? My jaw nearly dropped when I pulled this out of the packaging. Amazing. This is a case full size trapper. And isn't that beautiful? Just to let you guys know, this is the first folder I've bought since uh, February of this year. So it's been uh, close to a full year. 11 months since I bought a folder. Uh, that folder was a Kershaw Skyline, I believe. And to be honest, nothing's really caught my attention over the year. Um, haven't been really impressed with anything. I haven't had to have anything. Um, these fixed blades you see in the background here. I've kind of been on a bit of a fixed blade kick. This was a gift to me from Forest Walker. Which is an absolutely gorgeous uh, diving sparrow. And this is a diving sparrow boreal that I purchased off of Forest Walker. This is also gorgeous. And I've gotten a ton of use out of these over the summer. Phenomenal. But no folders. No folders. Uh, lately I've gotten back into the folder kick again. I've kind of caught the bug again. It's been spending a little bit of time online looking and, and seeing a few things that caught my eye. And let me tell you why I chose this knife. When I began, began collecting a couple years ago, this is what I was looking for. I had said uh, uh, numerous times that I was not interested in any of the the sort of modern tactical style of knives, the, the plastics and the different fiberglass materials or anything like that, nothing colorful. I wanted wood and brass and, and richness and bone and, and things like that. Classy knives. That's why this Buck 10, Buck 110, sorry, is one of the uh, one of my first knives. This one and a Kershaw Wildcat Ridge if you want to check that one out. They're my uh, first two knives in my collection. And I still love them today. They're so beautiful. Uh, the Buck 110 here is probably my most, most uh, iconic knife of all time. For sure, if you haven't seen specifically the Buck 110, you've seen this design before. This uh, wood, brass, this classic clip point shape, lock back folder. And every knife you've seen has been modeled after this one. And it is gorgeous brass. I'll do a. I'm gonna do a review on this one over Christmas, because Ray Bartlett has a fully custom Buck 110 on the way from Buck Knives, and I'm gonna show that one on the camera. I also have another 50th anniversary one of this, and uh, yeah, you're gonna get to see some Buck 110s on camera real soon. So purchasing this knife about a week ago, that's kind of so it's kind of me coming back to my roots. This is what I started with. This is what I wanted. Uh, I did grow an appreciation for this style of knife. Uh, shortly after I started collecting, I can't kind of came to the realization that this is not the most practical for my uses. Uh, for EDC gear and, and tools and different things that I've gotten into. Uh, I really do find this slightly more practical. It's a little more usable for me. But uh, definitely not as much class on it. It's just kind of dull looking. Uh, definitely not comparable to this. This is amazing. Like I said, this is my first case knife. This is the chestnut bone material. So this is real bone. And chestnut would be the color it's dyed. It's got that case emblem. Stamp. It's not the pin. Some of the stamps are uh, are pinned in there, and this one is not. It's got brass pins there. Here's where the beauty is. Look at that. Brass trimmed all the way between the uh, the layers there. Gorgeous. Everything's polished. The fit and finish is 
outstanding. Sorry for the camera moving there, guys. Let's take a look at the blades. You got a lovely polished clip point. Which is very nice. If I can get it to focus, see you've got that case. 2x stamp right there. 3x is above. And then the Trapper model also comes with uh, that sort of pen or spay blade. So you see it doesn't have that uh, that real pointy tip. USA made stainless steel 6254 is the model number so this thing I just think it's outstanding it's definitely uh, I'd say it's the most eye-catching piece I have now in my collection if you've seen my uh, knife case you follow me on Instagram uh, I took a picture of my case the other day and you can just sort of see this trapper just just glowing or gleaming on the top I could just stare at it all day it's so beautiful uh, I will say I was a little bit it took me a, a little bit to gain some perspective on this knife case knives are handmade in the USA now us youtubers or knife guys knife reviewers whatever I wouldn't consider myself a knife guy I'm not a knife channel like uh, Cameron over at every night knife guy for example but uh, but I like knives, and I've done lots of knife reviews. Got lots of knives, I collect them. So you go through all your different things, the fit and finish, the lock up, the pivot, how it feels, the blade centering. Um, just the overall finish, the fit and finish. Uh, just want to let you know that these types of knives are uh, highly machine made. So the tolerances are very tight. Everything is done... Uh, by machine mostly so so even though you get some of this one is not specifically made in China this is USA made but even like some of the Kershaws that are made in China have very high tolerances uh, for how they're made they're very quality made this here is handmade uh, and this is a fairly expensive knife I paid 86 bucks Canadian for this knife it's total taxes and shipping included from Warriors and Wonders. And uh, what I noticed was that there are blemishes and there are some minor flaws and the blade centering. The blade centering is nowhere near perfect. It's quite a bit off actually. This, this clip point here is way over to one side. And if you notice on the spay blade the grind is, is fairly uneven. You notice a big spot right here where it's kind of widened out. It's not perfect. So those were kind of drawbacks to me at first. I saw it and I said, well, the grind is, is not top notch. And, and there are a couple of little minor blemishes and things and blade centering. So I said, I would expect more from, from for what I paid for this knife. Then I thought about it it is handmade and the entire knife sort of speaks that handmade yes there are a few things that aren't spot on the tolerances aren't quite as tight as as something like this but it just screams handmade you could just see the love and the care that has been put into creating a beautiful knife the grind is uneven but you can tell that it was it was hand ground I just I just absolutely love this piece. It's my first case knife, definitely won't be my last. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Probably gonna go and final this knife a little more. Hope you have a good Christmas. Thanks for watching. Please comment down below if you have any questions or you want to know any more about this knife. Be happy to answer any questions. Please give a thumbs up. Share the video if you'd like. And uh, we'll see you later.